Hello again and welcome to Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Shiad. It's great to have you along. We've got a lot of great highlights to take a look at. We're going to talk Cowboy basketball. It has been a while since we have visited. In fact, the Cowboys have played five games since we visited last. So let's uh, talk about those. Let's go back to the Omaha game, shall we, coach? It's the last game the Cowboys played right here in this arena auditorium. Seems like so long ago. It's been a few weeks ago. But uh, that was a good win for the Cowboys here at home. They were coming in here with a lot of momentum and have continued since our game. It was a big time win for us at the time because we knew six of the next eight games we would be on the road. We came up strong down the home stretch and beat a pretty good team, if I'm not mistaken, about an 11 and four team right now. Omaha did a nice job once we got to Vegas in the same tournament we were in. You bet, the Cowboys picked up their seventh win against Omaha, then it was on to Vegas. And as coach mentioned, the Cowboys would go to Las Vegas, play two games in two days, uh, right in a row at the Global Sports Classic. First, you get Marshall. Then you get Houston, a close game and an overtime game. Let's go back to that Marshall game. What about that one? Well, both games and actually all 15 of our games this year, our guys have had terrific stick to itness. I did not know with a new ball club what it would be like. Would we sustain? Would we have a level of consistency? Would we put ourselves in position to win and be competitive down the home stretch? That, in fact, has happened all 15 nights. We haven't had the Ws that we would want those last two minutes, but a very powerful Marshall team. We lose that at the buzzer in Vegas, a team that just defeated Western Kentucky by 25 just two nights ago. And then we would play a Houston team who, if I'm not mistaken, also 12 and two at this point, just defeated Temple on the road at Temple by 30. We would go wire to wire in a double overtime game with Houston, another really good comeback. Uh, a long trip, four days on the road in Vegas. Our guys get a two and a half day breather home with their families. But all in all, Dave, a lot to be proud of in terms of our competitiveness. Not a big surprise. Now, coaches don't really want surprises, i.e. Ohio State, Clemson, TCU football. We've not had surprises off the floor, in the classroom, and really on the floor. The only surprises would be those last two minutes. We've won four, we've lost five in nine games decided in the last moments. Yeah, in the pre-conference season, Coach, the Cowboys have uh, uh, given off that aura. We are going to fight you. We will play you as uh, tooth and nail for 40 minutes, and that's what we saw in Las Vegas. Now, after wrapping up non-conference play, the Cowboys back out on the road. In fact, it'd be a six-day road trip, two games, opening up conference play. It all started at San Diego State, where Wyoming would go take on the pre-conference picks to win this league, and last year's regular season champions, the San Diego State Aztecs. I thought, Coach, they were all that. They were a, a very good basketball team, and yet the Cowboys hung in there and with, what, nine minutes to go? It's a four-point game. San Diego State, we hit a tidal wave to start the game. 23, if I'm not mistaken, 23 to 7. Uh, they had it all then, even jump shots. But you know what? Once again, different guys at different mo uh, moments. Hayden and Jordan come in. Uh, they do a great job. They bring us back. Uh, we not only get the game down to four with nine to play, we get the ball twice to put that in single digits. And we don't come up with the big plays down the home stretch. They make a few free throws. But all in all, again, for a new ball club, I've seen new ball clubs in a lot of different sports absolutely fold. This team has not done that, not even once in 15 games. That really was quite a game and quite an opener for the Cowboys. Then it's on to Reno, Nevada, as the Cowboys would take on the Nevada Wolf Pack right there in Lawler uh, Sports Center. And this was a heck of a ba another heck of a basketball game, Coach, against a very good team. Though that Wolf Pack's got some talent now, and the Cowboys fought them tooth and nail again. They've no patsies in this league. No. We don't have one and four teams, 0 and 15s, two and 13s. Nevada hadn't lost a game, 6 and 0 on their home court. Again, tooth and nail. Uh, we fight back both halves. We actually have a chance to take the lead with 40 seconds to play and then 25 seconds to play. We come up short with a couple of missed free throws, but I got to tell you something. Again, no coach could be prouder 
and no coach would want to swap. This is not a surprise. It started back in June, actually, when those six guys wore their cap and gowns and left Wyoming. I'm not pleased with the results, but where we are, I think we have to evaluate who we are, who they are each night. And you know what? I think we got a lot to look forward to down the road. Yeah, I think so too, Coach. There's no question this new Cowboy team showing improvement each and every night out. Well, stay with us. We have more to come on Inside Wyoming Basketball with Head Coach Larry Shiat right back after this. Inside Wyoming Basketball with Larry Shiat is brought to you by Wyoming Relay, the University of Wyoming Outreach School, the University of Wyoming International Programs Office, and your Magnificent Seven Wyoming Toyota dealers. She has been right by his side for over 40 years. The head coach of the Wyoming Cowboys has had that assistant with him all the time. As a matter of fact, she's probably the head head coach of the Wyoming Cowboys. Our own Kevin McKinney had a chance to sit down and visit with Pam Shiat. Pam, is it harder being a coach's wife or easier than you thought it would be? Well, I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. As, uh, we were still in college. Larry was just beginning his coaching career. Um, so it's been a kind of a learning curve for me. But good. Good, 40 years later, here I am, so. Your role when the Cowboys have a tough night or his team has a tough night, do you try to talk to him? Do you let him go sit in his room or how, how do you handle those? You know, that's evolved too. Um, early on I always thought that I could uh, make him feel better. Um, I, I kind of uh, learn my role with each game. Some games are tougher than others. Um, if he needs to be left alone I'll leave him alone and uh, if he wants to spend time with me I'll do that as well but um, have to be flexible. I know you enjoy traveling w with the team and, and with Larry, and, and uh, I, I think you have to feel that's a, a good support for him. He, he's a highly tightly wound guy, and uh, how, how do you help him there? Well, I, uh, until we moved back here, I wasn't able to travel as much. When our boys were young, I would go to their games, um, and I did work and it was often difficult to take vacation days to go with the teams. But that was one of the things that we decided when we moved back here was um, that it was important for both of us for me to be with him on the road. And he has told me so, that he likes having me there. Okay, so that's, that's one thing. Now you've got a son doing it, so you've compounded the situation. Uh, is that an interesting dynamic? You know, it's a great dynamic. They have their moments, um, and I let them have their moments. I, I choose not to intervene in that. Um, but Jeremy has been a real good support for, for Larry. He, he sees things oftentimes from a different perspective than his dad does, and isn't afraid to voice that opinion, whether Larry accepts it or not. Um, that's his prerogative, but it's, it's a really good dynamic between the two of them. You know, one of the things that is most impressive to me about Larry and you is that these kids are your family, and Larry's very family-oriented. Uh, he must have been a heck of a dad, he, even though he's gone a lot and away from the three boys. Uh, what kind of a father has he been? He's been a great father. He he often second-guessed himself, but I think if you were to ask any of the boys, they wouldn't, they wouldn't trade him. Um, as he was gone often, but when he was home, it was all in all the boys, um, from telling stories to bringing them into the locker room, um, and they have some great, great memories of those times. So let's talk about Pam a little bit. Uh, what you were involved in, what, what your passion has been. I know you've got one that we're going to talk about here in a few moments, but uh, uh, what was your profession and how, what did you do? Well, before Jeremy was born, I uh, went and got my master's in social work. Um, over the last few years, well, the last 
two decades, I would say. Um, I've worked in the field of social work um, in different uh, venues, uh, geriatrics for a while, hospital social work, but I found my passion with child abuse prevention and worked for over 15 years in uh, programs in South Carolina and Florida. Um, and while I'm not working here, uh, paid employment, I've become involved with Prevent Child Abuse Wyoming, um, the Wyoming Citizens Review Panel, to try to keep um, my hands in the pot, so to speak, and, and to make a difference. And I would say outside of Larry the Boys and Bo the Dog, that is your passion, the uh, Child Abuse Wyoming. And uh, talk a little bit about how you can impact that and how others can help. Well, child abuse is um, in every state. Um, every socioeconomic class is impacted by it. Um, but I've also, because I've worked on the prevention arm of it, I've also seen how prevention programs can make a difference in reducing um, the numbers of child abuse cases in different states and different cities. Um, Wyoming, even being a small state, has its number of child abuse cases. If we can prevent those uh, occurrences, then we've done quite a bit for our families and our children. How can we all help? Well, um, getting involved, um, I'm a firm believer in if you suspect somebody being involved in child abuse that you report it. Um, in a cup, in a, I'd say mid-January, we're trying to put together a fundraiser here um, before one of the games or during one of the games uh, to raise money for Prevent Child Abuse Wyoming and um, just love your kids, love everybody's kids and uh, if you think you can make a difference, you probably can. The wife of the head coach, mother of three sons, and the team mother, of course, Pam Shiat. She has been right by your side, your biggest supporter. Uh, and I know you've often said she'll tell you uh, what's on her mind as far as what's going on too, coach. She's been something. Uh, no mistake, my partner in crime, 40 years this past June, uh, I don't think people realize sometimes the sacrifices made. You're oftentimes, in many years, I was an absent father. Someday, when we're no longer coaching, I hope to be that present father all the time. But I gotta tell you, she's been everything that anybody could ask. You know, uh, that's the person who has to go to the kids' games, to the supermarket, to the bank. She has to do the listening that many times the coach is blocked out for. And then, of course, she has to deal with me after games sometimes <laughs> when that's not too rosy. But you know what? Uh, the best of the best. A lot of kindness and strength and support right there with Pam Shiat. Well, stay with us. We have more to come on Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Shiat. We're back after this timeout. Well, there's a brother and sister team going on here in UW basketball. Jordan Kelly, the cowgirl guard forward, and Cody Kelly, the guard right here for the Wyoming Cowboy basketball team. We had a chance to sit down and visit with the Kellys. I started playing, um, I, I believe, like second or third grade. Um, I was really lucky because I always played on uh, the grade older than me. Uh, I had some pretty good friends up in the up in the older grade, you know, so. And uh, and my dad and my dad would coach us and stuff, and he would carry us up through uh, elementary school and stuff. And then once we got into junior high, we kind of created our own program with the kids in my grade. And then that same team actually just carried all the way up through high school. So that's kind of why we were so good in high school is because we played together for so long. My dad is such a good motivator, and he truly wants the best for both of us and my younger sister too. You know, we kind of got into it sometimes, me and my dad, just because we're so competitive and we're so alike, but I don't think I would be the player or person I am today without my dad. He coached her team before me, and they actually had a really good team. They didn't lose to a Wyoming program for like six years straight or something like that, so they were really good too. I'm sure he looks back too. I mean, he used to be tiny. And you know now it's like we're kind of the same size. I and mean, he's a little taller, taller than me. But there was a point where I would like was so much stronger than him, and he was so little that 
he would, you know, drive to the basket and I would just, I'd just swat him away and, you know, laugh and he would get so, so mad. And so and then he started adjusting and he'd start shooting like layup hook shots and stuff. And I was like, all right, well, he's getting better in that sense. We were so competitive that I can't remember Jordan finishing one one-on-one -on -one game on that court. I wouldn't say I'd never finished a game, but I would say 90% of the time it would end up in some sort of fight where the ball was thrown. You know, I remember one time we were on a we were on a cruise ship. Uh, we took a little family vacation, and they had a basketball court on the cruise and stuff. And we started playing, you know, all night, and it was getting late and stuff. And I was losing. I, I lost a couple games, and and then like it was one more game, and I ended up losing it, and I was pretty upset. I kind of like. Ch chucked the ball and it went off the side of the cruise ship. So it was, it was pretty pretty intense. Yeah, he was being a little baby and lost a couple games, I think. And, and there went the ball, he just chucked it. And it was a fun trip though, besides that. But it's awesome, you know, to see him going to practice after I just got done with practice. You know, we never really got that in high school because um, ninth grade is, at the time, ninth grade was with the junior high and all that stuff. So we never really ought to go to school together in that sense. And um, so it's nice in that we live together. Um, I help him with classes sometimes, and you know we joke around, have fun, and you know sometimes we'll just be sitting there, and he's like, "Well, can we do something?" Because I'm bored, and you know. So it's nice to have a best friend and a roommate and a family member just to like hang out with. Well, we taped that interview two weeks ago, actually, the interview with Cody and Jordan. And coach, things have changed a little bit, unfortunately for Jordan Kelly. Cody Kelly, a big part of this Cowboy team, but what a great combination, those two. Let's start with Cody, because he is what every coach would want in a walk-on. He is not a walk-on in my world. He is a scholarship player, and he does everything that we would ask and more. Great student, great leader, and you know what? We found out in those last four years with Jack Benz, you don't know what you don't know. He may be ready down the road disappointment with his sister, uh, my all-time favorite uh, here, uh, and I think one of Joe Ligurski's favorites. As soon as we found out on the road in Vegas, I called uh, Jordan the next morning. And you know what, a lot to be proud of, and in her case, a lot to look forward to. We gotta get her healthy. She still can help this club, as Coach Ligurski pointed out, and you know what, she will. Absolutely. Of course, lost for the season, Jordan Kelly with the knee injury. Well, stay with us. We're back with more on Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Shiat. We're back after this. Inside Wyoming Basketball with Larry Shiat is brought to you by Wyoming Relay, the University of Wyoming Outreach School, the University of Wyoming International Programs Office, and your Magnificent Seven Wyoming Toyota dealers. Well, finally, it's back home again for the Wyoming Cowboys. They'll play two games this week right here on this arena auditorium floor, right down there on Maury Brown Court. The Cowboys will host Air Force Wednesday night. That's a 7 o'clock tap time. Then on Saturday afternoon, a 4 o'clock start with the UNLV Running Rebels. Big week for Cowboy basketball here, Coach. And a good one, a challenging one. Ironically, someone mentioned this is a must win. I think they were corrected by Papa Shai. Every game we played up to this point, every single game we will play home and away, they will be must wins. And our team knows that. We did not want to coach this team and use adjectives that some others have used. We wanted to coach this team to be the very best they could be. And to be honest with you, they have competed at their very best. We have not finished quite like we'd like. And so, as I said, these are must games as the next ones will be home or away. And that's the way great athletes and great staffs prepare their teams. Two pretty good teams coming in. First Air Force, they have 10 wins coming into this game, Coach. Yeah, not a surprise. Dave Pilipovich, not just a very good coach, a very good friend, doing a tremendous job. They've proven they can win at home and away. That is a team that we have never beat since our staff has returned to in five years. We have never beat them in the AA, so the challenge is in the forefront. Are they uh, uh, a little different than what we have seen in the past? I mean, the Joe Scott Air Force teams are very patterned. This is a, a little different Air Force approach, isn't it? No, they get it out, they get it going. I think he once described it as Princeton on roller skates because they're moving. 
and there'll be a challenge, but each game is a challenge. No patsies in the men's side. No roller skates needed for the UNLV Rebels, Coach. That's a, that's a team that will get it up and down, and a lot of good athletes on that team. Very publicized team from start to finish. They have gone out the last four years and ironically had top 10 recruiting classes, if I'm not mistaken, three of the last four years. This will be no different. Really impressive team, and boy, can they put it together on certain nights. We are finding, and we, I think we knew that this was going to be a very difficult league. I don't care what all the numbers say or whatever, but the Cowboys are seeing and finding out that it's not easy each and every night out, and I don't really expect a couple of tough games here. And I don't think our players have ever, ever thought that way. Since June and July in the summer workouts, we tried to prepare the new era for what this reality would be like. And despite having no top 25 teams, we've got some veteran clubs that have some pretty good players and some awfully good coaches. And that's the challenge. When you want to develop, you want to build, and you're coming off of a great, great veteran team that we had last year win a championship. This is called the grind, and we're ready for it. Yeah, well, we're looking forward to it right here in the Arena Auditorium Wednesday night against Air Force, 7 o'clock the tap time. Then Saturday afternoon, a 4 o'clock tip against the UNLV Running Rebels right here in the Arena Auditorium. Well, that's going to do it for us. Come back next time and check out the highlights. We'd be happy to visit with you, too. That'll do it for us. For the head coach, I'm Dave Walsh. So long, everybody.